every horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the oat cereal that's ready to eat, Benny Crocker mixes, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions. Present by special recording, The Lone Ranger. Say, kids, did you know that Betty Crocker made up her new peanut delight cake mix just for you? That's right. Betty Crocker knows how you go for the flavor of peanuts. The real fresh roasted peanuts you get at a circus. Mmm. -hmm. So she put that same exciting real peanut flavor in her new Betty Crocker peanut delight cake mix. It's the first cake mix ever made with butter from fresh roasted peanuts. And is it ever wonderful? A big, golden, more fun than a circus kind of cake. With a delicate flavor of fresh roasted peanuts in every bite. Everybody's happy that Betty Crocker's new peanut delight cake mix came to town. Especially Mom. Because it's so easy to bake. All the good things are right in the mix. You just add water and two fresh eggs for a perfect cake every time you bake. Cake after cake after cake. It's guaranteed perfect by Betty Crocker of General Mills, Minneapolis. Have Mom bake a peanut delight cake real soon, huh? With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, we go. Are you Silver? Hooray! Beth Billings, a rough, strong-minded woman, owned a large freight line with headquarters in San Antonio, Texas. On several occasions during recent months, large shipments either going to or coming from the Mexican border were stolen by a gang of outlaws. One morning, Beth was talking to her manager, Carlos Mendoza, in her office. Carlos, there's another big shipment of valuable goods to be sent to Monterey, leaving tomorrow. I want you to make certain our best men are fine to get it through. Si, okay, senora. I will put feet in charge of the wax. The business won't stand much more of it, Carlos. We have to take precautions against further robberies. Si, senora. Now, the wagons will be loaded during the night and we'll leave here at dawn. Tell Pete to pick his men carefully. Si. Now, one more thing. You're going to have to sort of take over for about a month, starting in a couple of weeks. I'm, uh... <laughs> Expecting company. Oh, of course, senora. Remember I told you I had a son, Bob? You said he is in St. Louis. Yeah, he went to school there and took some kind of job with a firm back east. Mm. I had a letter saying he's coming out to visit me. Oh, I haven't seen him for some years. He's a tender for to the West, no? Oh, you might put it that way. But he's my son and that's enough for me. Uh, but now you better go and make arrangements for that shipment. Yes, right away, senora. Later that day, Carlos rode to a cabin in the nearby hills. Ho, 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 ho. Oh, hi, Carlos. Hi. Well, Sandy... You and the men must be ready for more action, no? Yeah, we're tired of sitting around. What's up this time? Another big shipment of valuable goods, senor. Pete will be leading the wagons, and he will cooperate with you. He will stop the wagons at the Nueces River and have the horses unhitched for watering. There, you will move in, bringing the usual pack horses to carry the cargo from the wagon. Store it away in the large cave down the river. Later, we take it to the boat at Corpus Christi. All right, Carlos. We'll be there whenever you say. The wagons leave at dawn tomorrow. You can judge about when they reach the river. Sure. We'll be there. Wait. In 
the insurance office in St. Louis. Bob Billings sat listening as the manager of the company talked. Bob, we're sending you to San Antonio to investigate the freight line robberies. Now, your mother owns that line, and from what you tell me, doesn't know you're an insurance investigator, right? That's right, Mr. Manley. I figure you can go out there, presumably, just to visit your mother. I'm counting on you as our best man to solve those robberies. I'll do my best, sir. Yeah, by the way, you'll need help. I've written to a certain padre in the West who will get in touch with a friend of mine. A masked man who rides with an Indian. A masked man? That's right. He helps keep law and order in the West. He's known as the Lone Ranger. Well, how will I get in touch with him? <laughs> Don't worry. He'll get in touch with you, Bob. Good. I already wrote Mother I'd be out to visit her in about two weeks. Don't tell her the purpose of your visit. You'll have to play the part of a visiting tenderfoot son for a while. No one need know you're an expert rider and gunman. <laughs> Don't worry, sir. I'll put on an act that'll make my mother wish I hadn't come out there. <laughs> Good. Remember, Bob, as a private investigator for this company, you've taken an oath to do your duty. Now, better go get packed. Your train leaves tonight. Now, remember, Mr. Manley. Goodbye. Goodbye, and good luck. In San Antonio, the wagons had left on schedule. When they neared the Nueces River... Pete, who rode horseback alongside the head wagon, spoke to the driver. We'll stop at the river, Hank, to water the horses and let them rest a while. Good idea, Pete. It's plenty hot and dusty. I'll tell the other drivers to unhitch the horses and lead them into the water. All right, get up, Pete. Get up. Later at the river, the horses were unhitched from the six wagons when... Hey! Look out, boys! Let's be careful! Use your gun! Oh! Oh, 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 oh. Stop your guns, all of you! You don't feel to shoot you and the horse! Do as he says, men! There's too many for us! Throw your guns on the riverbank! Hit mine! I see you men cover them while we transfer the cargo from the wagons to our pack horses! Let's go, men! The empty wagons returned to San Antonio, and Bess Billings paced the floor of her office as she talked to Carlos and Pete. Oh, that gang knows every move we make. This sort of thing's going to ruin my business. I've got to do something about it. But what can you do, senora? We can put on more men, yeah, but they... a minute. A friend of mine, Clarabelle Hornblow, knows the Lone Ranger. I'm going to get a message to Clarabelle and see if she can persuade him to come here. The Lone Ranger? I've heard of him. Yeah, yes, so have I. Who hasn't? And believe me, if he does come here, I reckon that gang will really sit up and take notice. Some days later, and Tonto, at the request of their good friend Clarabelle, rode to the territory near San Antonio. As they stopped to rest their horses, Tonto said, You think gang that robbed freight line still operate around here, Kimasani? Well, from what Mrs. Billings said in her letter to Clarabelle, that gang has been operating for some time, Tonto. Oh. She lives in a large house on the edge of town. After dark, we'll go there and get the details from her. That's a good idea. Uh, what about the message you get from Padre about the young fellow from St. Louis? Strangely enough, the young man is Mrs. Billings' son, Bob. He may have arrived by now. If he has, we'll not let his mother know we were to meet him. Me savvy. According to Mr. Manley's letter that the Padre showed me, Bob is to investigate the robberies while he's presumably visiting his mother. Even she isn't to know he's the insurance investigator. Well, we'll work with him to solve the robberies and find the gang. Well, let's go, Tonto. <coughs> Easy, steady, big fellow. Easy, scouty, big fellow. Come on, fill Come on, fill Bob Billings had arrived that morning, and Beth called in Carlos and Pete to introduce him. 
You sent for us, senor? Yeah, Carlos. I want you and Pete to meet my son, Bob. Bob, this is my manager, Carlos, and Pete, the wagon boss. Oh, hello, hello, Carlos. Pete, my mother's been telling me about the outlaw gang that's been operating against the freight line. Oh, see, si, senor Bob. It is a big gang. They seem to have a smart leader, eh, Pete? That's right. Mother, I sure wish there was something I could do to help catch them. Oh, forget it, Bob. We've got to admit you're a tenderfoot, and you'd be no match for hombres like them. It takes a real hombre with plenty of nerve to go after men like them. Huh. Don't see that you two have been any kind of match for them either. Oh, Bob and I are going home to supper. We'll see you both later. So long. Yeah, so long. Be okay, so long. All right, Mother. I could go and shoot. I might have a chance. Hear that, Carlos? Mother, I sure wish there was something I could do to help catch him. <laughs> <laughs> what a dude. We were afraid he might be the Snoopy guy. Yeah. We have nothing to worry about from him, Senor Pete. Yeah, hey, but the masked man and his Indian friend will be getting here before long. What about them, Carlos? Do not worry, Pete. The Senora will introduce me to them. Then I watch them closely. If they seem to be getting on our track... They will not live long enough to tell about it. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. All over the country, in every direction, all you, all you do is the question, and here's one that the happy people have to say. That's the word up north. Just ask the champion. Up north, we know what Wheaties mean to guys like Slug and Harvey Keene. We love to see him belt that ball and make the fielders climb the wall. And Richie Ashburn, yes, indeed, he plays baseball at Wheaties speed. Just watch him flash from base to base. This boy could win in any race. Yes, sir, Harvey Keene and Richie Ashburn are longtime Wheaties fans. Both of them know there's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties flake. Wheaties, breakfast of champions. Keep on eating your Wheaties, and you'll be do 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 and I'll be okay. to continue. That night after dark, the Lone Ranger and Toto rode to the Billings house on the edge of town, where they met Beth Billings and were introduced to her son, Bob. While Beth was out of the room, the masked man mentioned receiving the letter from Bob's boss in Kansas City. Later, Carlos arrived at the house to meet the Lone Ranger and Toto. The masked man discussed a shipment that was to go out in two days and suggested a plan. I suggest that Toto and I follow the wagons at a distance. If the gang attacks, have your drivers give up immediately. Then when the outlaws leave with their pack horses and the cargo, we'll trail them to their hideout while someone goes for the sheriff. See, see, that is a very good idea. What do you think, Senora Billings? If that's the way the masked man wants it, we'll do it that way. Instruct the man. <laughs> see, Senora, I will go now. Uh, let us hope the plan works, senor. If it doesn't, my company be sunk for sure. Adios, everyone. Good night. Good night, Carlos. Well, Toto, time we went back to our camp. Uh -huh. Bob, would you care to walk to our horses with us? Perhaps I can give you some helpful information about the West. Go on, Bob. You can learn a lot from us, masked man. I'd be glad to. Good night, Mrs. Billings. We'll do our best to see that those outlaws are captured. Good night. Tell them not to go into action until the outlaws start to unload. 
Toto and I will be close enough to move in and help. Fine. The sheriff and I will ride in one of the wagons. But what about the drivers? If one of them is not to be trusted... Watch everybody connected with the wagons. All right. I'll see the sheriff in the morning. Good. We'll be seeing you, Bob. Good night. Good night. Good night. The morning the wagons were to leave, Carlos secretly met Pete for a short talk in the office before Bess arrived. Pete, the plan is to have the drivers give up at once. Then the masked man and Indian plan to follow Sandy and the gang after they load the pack horses. Holy mackerel. But we shall trick them. The shipment is headed for Monterey in Mexico. Now, where the trail goes through a stretch of woods, the gang will move in and take over their wagons. And they will drive them straight on through to Mexico, huh? <laughs> the masked man will be following at a distance, and he will not know anything is wrong. Sandy and the gang will move in quietly, so there will be no gun battle. Hey, that fits in just right. Yeah. Mrs. Billings told the drivers last night, no matter what happens, to give up without a fight. <laughs> I know. Well, I go tell Sandy now. Delay the wagons for about an hour, and then start. When the wagons finally reached the point two miles from town, Pete was surprised to see the sheriff with Bob and 20 men ride from a stand of trees. Stop the wagon! Oh, 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 oh. Bob Billings, Bess Billings' son. He'll be giving the orders from now on. Hey, what is this? We're changing the plans. The sheriff's men are going to ride inside the wagons with the cargo. Now, hold on. I was put in charge of these wagons. If you're going to interfere, I'm going to turn them over to you and go back to town. All right, get up there. Wait a minute. Hey, let go of my horse's bridle. You're not leaving, Pete. Get off your horse and get onto the seat of the first wagon beside the driver. No tenderfoot's going to tell me what to do on it. Hey, what a fast draw. He's no tenderfoot. Drop your gun. Drop it. Wait. All right. You may be in the clear, but I'm making sure. You'll ride on the wagon seat, and I'll be in the wagon with a gun at your back if you try anything. All right, Sheriff, let's get the man into the wagon. Right. Come on, get right. moving now. When the sheriff's men were hidden inside the wagons, Bob gave the order to move on. All right, let's go. Yes. It was early afternoon when the wagons reached the long stretch of woods of which Carlos had spoken. All right, men, there's the wagons. Let's go. Get up. Get up. The outlaw gang rolled out in front of the wagons with menacing guns. Oh, oh, hey, Chief, what are you doing riding the wagon seat? I just decided to ride this way, that's all. All right, you drivers, you're all covered. Throw your guns to the ground. Now all of you get down, all except Pete. My men will die and gag you and hide in the woods with our horses. Somebody will find you there later. Now, get moving. The drivers were taken into the woods, then tied and gagged. Then the gang's horses were hidden among the trees back from the trail, with the idea that Carlos would get them later. Finally, Sandy called out... All right, men, there are five wagons. That means two of you on each seat. All right, come on. As the men started to climb onto the wagon seats, Pete suddenly leaped from the first wagon, shouting... Stay away! Run for the woods! Bob Billings leaned forward and fired. Oh, my leg! Sheriff, get him quick! Right! Let him have it! The careless men sprang from the wagons with guns blazing. The outlaws, taken completely by surprise, fought back desperately. The leader, Sandy, still on horseback, spurred his horse down the trail. Get up there! Huh. The leader's getting away! Come to the... The Lone Ranger and Tato had heard the gunfire and urged their horses into a gallop. The masked man saw the leader, Sandy, the only man mounted, heading down the trail. Without stopping near the wagons, he started in pursuit. Faster, big fellow, faster. Come on, Fiddler. Sandy heard the famous cry, and panic-stricken turned in the saddle and fired. 
his gun clicked on empty cartridges, he holstered it, then gave his attention to losing the masked figure behind him. But the great horse, Silver, exerted every effort to lessen the distance between them. Then the Lone Ranger used his lariat. The rope suddenly snaked out and dropped around Sandy's shoulders. Hey! Hold on! Hold on! As Silver instinctively reared back, the taut line dragged Sandy from the saddle. Sandy, big fella, easy, easy now. All right, you get up. No, no, don't shoot us. I hurt my shoulder. I'm taking you back to the wagon. Oh. Then you'll do some fast talking if you don't want to die. No. Now get going. By the time the Lone Ranger arrived at the wagons with Sandy, the gang had been subdued. Pete and Sandy outdid each other in putting the blame on Carlos. When they finished, the sheriff spoke. We'll pick up Carlos when we get back to town. Well, here comes the rest of my men leading our horses. My mother sure was taken in by a fine bunch of crooks. I can't understand. Carlos was taken in by you. He thought you were a tenderfoot. I don't savvy all this. Bob Billings is the insurance investigator. What? And far from being a tenderfoot. Bob, I think you ought to resign and come run your mother's business. That's a good idea, Sheriff. Now that I've met that masked man, I want to get to know him better and be... Say, where is he? Hey, the Indian is gone, too. <laughs> I saw him leave him quietly a while ago, after they helped attend to the wounded. Bob, there's one army who doesn't hang around after a job is done. He saw that his plan worked out and the gang got captured. That's all he's interested in. But if you decide to stay out here... I guarantee you'll never have a finer friend than the Lone Ranger. Special recording Mondays through Fridays at this same time.